Welcome to another recorded lesson by Mr. Brash. We're going to do factoring special cases today, a couple special scenarios that require some extra thinking as we go through. This is an extension of our Applications of Quadratics Unit 4 for the Grade 10 course. Again, my name is Mr. Brash. You can find my videos at youtube.com slash Mr. Brash. Here's my email address if you ever need to get in touch with me. Now, I always like to start with a little bit of a recall, so let's just practice some of the skills we'd learned prior. We're going to factor 8x squared plus 14x plus 3. And you always want to, first step, see if there's a GCF. So if you're taking notes here, you know, ask yourself, is there a greatest common factor? And there's not because of the 3. What we're going to do now is we're going to factor this trinomial. And we've learned two different ways to factor trinomial. One, when the a value is a 1, and the other one, the other scenario, is when the a value is not a 1, which is what we have right here. So the thing that we've learned to do is take a look at the 8 and the 3. This skill is called decomposition. In case you hadn't heard that term before, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to break the 14 into two different numbers and then factor by grouping. So we have to multiply 8 times 3, that gives us 24. Now it's our job to break 14x up into two numbers that add to 14 and multiply to 24. It's extremely similar to the product and sum or box method or whatever when a value is 1, but the added little trick is that we have to multiply a times c to get there. So what two numbers multiply to make 24? 1 and 24, they don't add to 14. 2 and 12, 2 and 12 adds to 14. Okay, so let's do 2 and 12. So we're going to say plus 2x plus 12x. And we haven't done anything out of the ordinary, nothing illegal, because 2x plus 12x is 14x. All we've done is broken them up into two different pieces. And so now we're going to factor by grouping. We're going to take a look at the left hand two and we're going to factor out what's common. So the greatest common factor is 2x. We're left with 4x plus 1. Then we're going to factor the second two. The greatest common factor is a 3. So I'm going to factor out the 3. And I'm left with 4x plus 1. And the 4x plus 1 should look familiar. It's the same in both scenarios. So 4x plus 1 is a large factor here. We've got a, a 2, an x, and a 4 plus, 4x plus 1. Here we've got a 3 and a 4x plus 1. So they are common. So I can factor that out just like a GCF. So what we end up with is 4x plus 1 times, well, you know, we got to figure that out, times 2x plus 3. And just in case we're going to check to see if these are factorable at all and they're not. So that's where we're at. That's the skills we should have right now in a nutshell. So before we get any further I just want to talk about the number 4 and its relationship to 2 squared. 4 has a special kind of name because 2 squared gives us a whole number of 4 we can call that a perfect square. It's a whole number. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at expanding and simplifying these kinds of scenarios where this is called a perfect square. So not only is the 4 a perfect square, but so is this bracket. This right here is a perfect square. And so the squared tells us to write the bracket out twice and multiply. So let's expand. 2x and 2x, 4x squared. 2x and 3 is 6x, 3 and 2x is 6x, and 3 times 3 is 9. And I want to pause here. I want to pause because this is a very important moment in this expansion before we collect the two 6x's. We want to ask ourselves, what do we know about 4x squared? We know that 4 is a perfect square because I just told you that it is x squared is a perfect square, because that's the definition, x times x. Well, what do we know about 9? Well, 9 is also a perfect square. Let's take a look at the original statement. 2x plus 3 became 4x squared 
and a plus 9. You've got to be seeing the pattern there. Now you cannot just put the squared inside the brackets. You can't just say 2x squared and 3 squared is your answer because of these middle terms, the two 6x's. But what do we know about 6x? Let's take a look. Is there a connection between the original statement and 6x? And the connection is that 2x times 3 is 6x. And we get it twice. Why do we get it twice? Well, we get it twice because the bracket is squared, which means write it twice. And so when we're done collecting our like terms, what we have is 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Now let's see if there's a pattern here. So when we have to expand and simplify a perfect square, we can square the first term, 4x squared, multiply the 2x and the 3, and that gives us 6x, and then just double it. So 2x times 3 is 6, double that, you get 12, and then 3 squared is 9. And so there's a little trick to expanding and simplifying a perfect square, and we're going to utilize that to go backwards. If we had started with 4x squared plus 12x plus 9, how would we factor it to get back to the perfect square? And so I have an example for that. Let's factor 25x squared minus 40x plus 16. First step in any factorization, is there a greatest common factor? We take a look across the board here, there is not. We've got odd numbers and even numbers, and there's no common factor here. So we could do decomposition. We could multiply 25 times 16, get a really large number, and have to deal with that really large number and break it apart to make the 40. Or why don't we take a look at the trinomial that we have and see if there's a pattern. You know, taking 30 seconds to see if there's a pattern might end up saving you a lot of time uh, trying to figure out what 400 breaks down into to make the 40. Although that would actually be easy, but in any event. Well, what do we know about 25? Well, I know that 25 is, I can take the square root of that. That's a perfect square. And x squared is a perfect square. Well, what do I know about 16? 16 is also a perfect square. I can take the square root of that. So let's do that. What's the square root of 25x squared? Well, the square root of 25x squared is 5x. What's the square root of 16? The square root of 16 is 4. Now we just need to kind of double check for ourselves, does it fit the pattern that we discovered up here in order to create the 40? So what's 5x times 4? Well, 5x times 4 is 20x. Now is 20x half of 40x? And yes, it is. If I double 20x, just like we had to here with the 6x's to get this, I'll get 40x. Now the problem is I won't get negative 40x. So how can we take care of that? We can take care of that by throwing the negative here on the 4 to get negative 20x. And that's not a bad thing because negative 4 squared is still positive 16. And so the factorization of this is 5x minus 4 times 5x minus 4 which is the perfect square, 5x minus 4 squared. And that might have been very confusing for you, so let's take a look at what did I do. So I took the square root of ax squared, and I took the square root of c. And I kind of combined them together in a bracket. And the trick was, if I multiply that, if I take the square root of ax squared and I multiply that times the square root of c, do I get half of bx? And if the answer is yes, it's a perfect square. Now this may have confused you as well. This is, this is highly an academic kind of thing. And if it does, that's, that's not necessarily bad. You can still do decomposition on this. I'm just trying to show you a shortcut. So let's apply this shortcut to one more example. 
49x squared, 84x, and 36 do not have anything in common. There's no greatest common factor here. That's what you always want to try first. So it's a trinomial and a is greater than one. Could we use decomposition? Yes, but 49 times 36 is a mess. And I'm not gonna try and figure out what the factors of that add up to 84. So let's try and see if it's a perfect square. What were the rules? The rules were to take the square root of the first item, square root of 49 is seven, square root of x squared is x, take the square root of the last item, which is six, and check if I multiply seven x times six, do I get something that when I double it, I get 84? Well, seven x times six is 42 x, and 42 x is half of 84 x. So what I can say is this is 49 x squared plus 42 x plus 42 x plus 36. I haven't done anything illegal. All I've done is broken up the 84 into two bits of 42. This is exactly like the recall on the first slide. We take a look here at this recall here. All we did was break up the 14x into a 2x and a 12x. So what we can do now, just like in decomposition, is we can group the left-hand sides and the right-hand side and factor them by grouping. Now, there is a shortcut, and I've shown it to you in example one, and we'll reiterate that at the end of this, but what do 49x squared and 42x have in common? And the answer is seven and an x. So 49 divided by seven is seven, x squared divided by x is x. 42 divided by seven is six, and the x is turn into one. And then that's the, the left-hand two. Let's factor the right-hand two. 42x and 36, both divisible by two, both divisible by six. So let's factor out a six. And what we're left with is seven x plus six. So we have a lot of seven x's and sixes here. We have a common factor of seven x plus six, so I'm going to factor out that common factor, and I'll be left with seven x plus six. So if, if I wanna write this shorter, I can write this seven x plus six squared, because that's what it is, it's a perfect square. And if we'd used the shortcut that I showed you in the first example, the square root of 49, seven, square root of x squared is x, square root of 36 is six, and it's a perfect square. And you can double check your work, just expand it back out, see if you get the original. I can't reiterate enough that this only works if seven x times six is half of the 84 term in the center here. So this won't always, always, always work. So be very cautious. Anytime you're using a trick in math, you have to be a little cautious. So now let's go into a different special case. So that was one special case, that was perfect squares. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about when we're missing the B value. So I've got here X squared minus nine, and I'm not actually missing the B value. The real thing is here that the B value is zero. So let's factor this like we've been taught. We're gonna factor this using decomposition. And so we have to find the factors of nine that add to zero. And that's actually not that difficult because the only thing that multiplies to nine is either one times nine, which won't add to zero, or three times three, which could potentially add to zero. And it's going to because it's a negative nine in the end here, which means the factorization is x plus three and x minus three. And there's a trick to getting to that faster. This right here is a difference. That's what subtraction means. Subtraction is the difference between two values. And if we take a look at what happened, what's the square root of x squared? It's x. What's the square root of nine? Let's ignore the fact that it's negative nine, but what's the square root of nine? It's three, three and three. And the only way that they can multiply together to create the negative nine is if one was positive and one was negative. So this is called, this entire thing here is called 
a difference of squares. It's a very special case. It's a binomial. You'll never see it as a trinomial. It's always a subtraction. This does not work with addition. And it's always a square, a perfect square, and another perfect square. And all you have to do is figure out what the square roots are, add one as a positive and one as a negative, and away you go. If you find that difficult, you're, you're not there mentally with the multiplication tables, just pretend that your b value is zero and use product and sum accordingly. You'll still get the right answer. Let's try it again. Factor 81x squared minus 16. So you're gonna to wanna to ask, is there a greatest common factor? No, there is no greatest common factor between these two values. Is it a trinomial? Meaning three terms, no, it's not. So we're not gonna do product and sum, we're not gonna do decomposition, unless you want to pretend that your b value is zero. So is it a difference of squares? I mean, I see a difference here and it is a binomial. Well, what's the square root of 81? It's nine, the square root of x squared is x. What's the square root of 16? It's four, so these were both perfect squares. So all I have to say is that this is nine x plus four times nine x minus four. And that's a true statement. You know, I can check my answer 9x times 9x, 81x squared. 9x times negative 4, negative 36x. Positive 4 times 9x is positive 36x. So we take a look here, effectively what's happening is that's nothing, that's zero. 4 times negative 4 is the negative 16. So that's how we got a zero as our b value. And so it worked. Let's try it one more time with a little bit of a trick in it. Factor 12x cubed minus 75x. Okay, not a trinomial, so not product and sum. Not even a quadratic because that's x to the power of 3. Is it a difference of squares? And the answer is quite obviously no. Okay, so what can we do? Well, the same thing you're always supposed to do for a factoring. The first step, greatest common factor. So let's find the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor between a 12 and a 75. And you know, that might be a little tough because of the 75, but 12 only has a couple factors. It's not gonna be two, it's not gonna be six, and it's not gonna be four. And if you're wondering why, well, 75 is an odd number. So it's not gonna work. So is it a three? And the answer is yes, they have a three in common. And they also have an X in common. So let's factor that out as well. 12 divided by 3 is 4, x cubed divided by x is x squared. Negative 75 divided by 3 is 25, and x divided by x is 1, so it disappears. Okay, so we use greatest common factor and we have it factored. But you always need to check and see if one of your factors is still factorable. And in fact, 4x squared minus 25 is a difference of squares. So we're going to factor that difference of squares. And we're gonna do that using the trick we just learned. Square root of the first one, square root of the next one. One's positive, one's negative. And if you're you know, not sure, tell the person who's reading your work that you're checking your work, expand it back out, you'll get 12x cubed minus 75x if you've done everything correctly. So just be careful. Always check to see if everything's factored as fully as it can be. And that's it for this. Those are the two special cases. The special cases are a perfect square and a difference of squares. And they both deal with perfect square numbers where you can find a little shortcut for yourself on factoring these. Now my students have uh, practice out of the textbook. It's listed on our website. You're more than welcome to practice out of whatever textbooks you have. There's plenty of questions like this on the internet. And of course, Khan Academy has all sorts of great materials that you can take a look at. Again, I'm Mr. Brash, thanks for watching. I loved some comments, please, in the videos. Take a look at some of my other videos. As I get through the course, uh, it will be a full complete rendition of 
uh, the grade 10 academic course here in, in Ontario.